This video is brought to you by Brilliant. About a month ago, I published a video about my ultimate single screen productivity iPhone setup. The feedback from viewers was mm. plenty requested an iPad version of it, so here it is. This is my ultimate iPad home screen setup. It is simple yet smart setup with some hidden features that allow me to run my chores, play games, and most of all, stay productive without losing myself in endless scrolling and searching. Now I've seen my fair share of complicated scripted and automated iPad setups, which are awesome, but this is not one of them. I wanted to keep things simple, clean, and understandable. There are, however, a few clever and simple to create shortcuts and automations that I'll show you how I've created towards the end of the video. Also, unlike my iPhone setup, I don't take advantage of focus modes because I have plenty of real estate on the iPad. Second also, the perks of bending the English language to my will, I use my iPad 99.99% horizontally. If I flip it in vertical mode, things get a little messy, thanks to the unique iPad inability to specify the item's locations, but honestly, I couldn't care less for that 0.01% of my accidental flipovers. So, the two key apps to keep in mind here are Shortcuts and Widget, and the rest is my principle of avoiding redundancy so I can keep the structure minimal yet useful. So in an overview, I have only one homepage. On the left, I have the Site Widget page, and on the right, I have the App Drawer, which I almost never use. On the homepage, I keep all widgets on the left, while my most used apps are taking the rest two thirds of the screen. The principle is that all multitasking apps and those that I use almost all the time live in the dock. The rest remain on home screen besides the widgets. Note that the dock has the recent app suggestions turned off so that I can utilize its space and also because I know what I want to open next and there's no need for iPad OS to tell me. Before we get to the widgets, which I think are the most interesting part of this setup, let's go over the dock. I have 12 apps and one folder, at least that's what it looks like at a glance. In reality, I have 14 apps plus two in the folder, so let me explain. Just like on the Mac, I keep the Files app on the very left side of the dock. Since I always drag and drop files around the system, it deserves to live there. The next app is not actually an app, but a shortcut that opens two apps in split screen. Like I mentioned towards the end of the video, I'll go over my shortcuts and how I've set them up for those that are interested. In a nutshell, when I open that shortcut, it opens my email client Hey and my messages in split screen where I've predefined their width. Even if I kill those apps, once I press that shortcut, it will open them again following the same organization. By this point, you might be saying to yourself, ah, I know the next shortcut, it opens Twitter and one password in split view again. But you're totally wrong. That shortcut opens Twitter and one password in slide over mode, which is what they're made for, in my opinion. Once in slide over, I can summon them from the right whenever I need to refer to a password or quickly glance at Twitter. Also, shout out to the old Twitter logo that I used. By the way, you can visualize those dual app shortcuts however you like when placing them on the home screen. In my case, I've created my own simple dual icon that represents the action. Second, by the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? The rest of the items in the dock are some usual suspects. Following my principle of glancing at the red messages bubbles, I have my instant messaging apps living in a folder. Like I mentioned in my ultimate iPhone home screen setup video, which I'll link at the end of this one, the idea here is to just be able to glance if I have a message from someone, not so much to access them quickly. I keep them in the dock and not in a home screen because as I work in another app, I can just quickly take a look should a red bubble emerge. The settings app is the last as my other most used app in iPad OS. Now, looking at the apps on my homepage, towards the top portion, I have my creative favorites like Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Procreate, which is what I use to draw my wallpapers. I'll put a link to my packs if you're interested. Typefully is not actually an app, but a web page that I've added to my homepage. Thanks to daily text recommendation, I just started taking advantage of scheduling my tweets uh, with this service. Freely is my RSS reader of choice, while Clippo is my clipboard manager. Now, Clippo is not the best clipboard manager out there, but I like that it's simple to use and it is a one-time payment app that costs little to nothing. On the bottom row, I have two folders, one for gaming and one for streaming services. For those interested, I recently started enjoying Samurai Jack as it is a very satisfying game to play with a controller and Warped Card Racers 
is a fun card game that my son and I are having a blast with. Now let's talk widgets. The first widget on the first one third of the homepage is the Widgie widget. I got a ton of requests for my Widgie widgets from my iPhone video, so I'll be very clear this time. I will put a link to the widget in the description below. Use that link in its entirety to paste in Widgie in order to retrieve the widget and install it on your device. Don't just copy the highlighted portion, select where it starts with Widgie URL. Okay, so this is an informative widget. I use it to display the time, day and date in a weekly view. Below it, I have the hourly weather forecast for the next three hours. I was thinking of integrating some volume controls, but it might become too crowded, so I don't know, we'll see. Below that widget, in a stack, I have my photo gallery suggested widget, which I might switch to if I want to be surprised by a cute memory. Something to keep in mind, almost all my widgets are actually stacks where I have more than one widget underneath the main one. With that being said, I don't use auto rotate and widget suggestions because it ruins my zen. Below the big widget stack, I keep a widget called MD Vinyl. This is a very simple yet very elegant third-party Apple Music controller that used to play, you guessed it, music. Alongside the actual controller, MD Vinyl offers a beautiful vinyl-style record player that displays and rotates the album art of whatever is playing. Below the MD controller, I have my Things widget, which is what I use to write down my tasks as they come to mind. Underneath it, I have my recent Notion documents that I can easily refer to. And this reminds me that I missed something when I talked about the doc earlier. Not sure if you caught that, but my Notion doc icon is a bit different. That's because it's a shortcut that opens Notion specifically in my videos page, which is my most used Notion page anyway, just FYI. Back to the widgets, the bottom left widget is the MD Vinyl that I mentioned a minute ago, as well as my other playing options. Below it I have my audio player, audible, audio, audible player, anyway, audible player and pocket casts. The final widget on the right is my quick notes page in Notion, which I use to gather all my ideas and quick jots when necessary. I've gone back and forth with both my iPhone and iPad setups throughout the years, trying to find the perfect balance between productivity and optimization. Not too busy and plenty useful. The process has always been a joyful challenge to me because it's kind of like solving a puzzle. Talking about puzzles, Brilliant's course on scientific thinking explores the laws of physics and principles of engineering to help you gain an understanding and insight by looking at the world differently. Just like balancing between apps, shortcuts and widgets, Brilliant's balance lesson showcases the principles used to build skyscrapers and stabilize rockets on re-entry. One of my personal favorite lessons is the one about gears, where you can learn the fundamental gear interactions to extract what can and can be done with gears. Like the scientific thinking course, Brilliant provides other courses with storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges and problems to solve, opening your eyes to the world around you by solving puzzles with science. Right now, you can sign up for free by going to brilliant.org forward slash this is E, where the first 200 people can upgrade getting 20% off the annual premium subscription, which is what I use. In the sidebar widget page, I have the Yahoo Weather widget and the Apple TV widget. I'm big on Smallville right now, and I'm honestly not sure how I missed that show way back when. Anyway, an interesting widget sandwiched between the two is another shortcut widget. It's a shortcuts widget that contains four shortcuts. Three of those shortcuts control my volume, 25, 50 and 90% and the fourth gives me quick access to airplay whenever I'm listening to my home pods. Very handy and much quicker than pulling down the control center. Okay, so now let me show you how you can set up my simple shortcuts yourself. It's dead easy. In shortcuts, I've created folders for various aspects of my automations as I'm planning to slowly expanding them. Under the app behavior folder, I've placed the shortcuts that determine how the apps behave. Let's look at the one called Haysages. It opens Hey and Messages. Creating it is as simple as searching for the split screen between command and selecting which two apps should open in split screen. By expanding the toggle, you can choose the aspect ratio of the respective apps so that they look just the way you like them. Moving on to Twist words. This opens Twitter and one password, but in slide over mode. These are two very basic open commands that when expanded can be selected to execute it in slide over mode. You can add as many apps as you like here, all of which will open in slide over 
on the side. The Notion shortcut is provided by Notion and it is as simple as dragging over the command and that's all. My volume and airplay commands live under the sound control folder and are just set volume commands for the desired breakdown of the volume. You can do all sorts of increments. The airplay shortcut is the set playback destination shortcut where I've set it to ask each time where I want to broadcast. I don't want to fix because I might be at the office or here in my home studio. Very, very simple stuff. If you want to find inspiration for integrating focus modes, check out my iPhone home screen setup video here and don't forget to subscribe. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E. Over and out.